Good morning everyone. Today is Wednesday and we are going to read chapter four of Because of Winn-Dixie. But before we do, I want you to take just 10 seconds and just think about what we have learned so far in the story Because of Winn-Dixie. Just think about the characters that we've met, what the characters have done, how they have helped each other, which we discussed yesterday. So go ahead and take some time to just think about what we've learned about in Winn-Dixie so far. Alright, so, so far in Winn-Dixie, we have met the characters Opal, the preacher, her dad, and Winn-Dixie. So we know that Opal only lives with her dad. They live in a trailer park, but remember, it was adults only, so she was an exception to the rule, which means she technically wasn't supposed to be there, but she was allowed to anyway. So she kind of broke the rule, but it was okay. But she met Winn-Dixie in a grocery store and decided to take him home because she saw that he needed her. And throughout the story, we've also noticed that Winn-Dixie kind of helps Opal as well. So, for example, yesterday we learned that Winn-Dixie helped Opal kind of get courage, which is the word we learned last week, to ask her dad about her mom. So today in Chapter 4, we are going to learn a little bit about her mom. So if you want to go ahead, open your books to page 26, and we will go ahead and get started with chapter four. One, said the preacher. We were sitting on the couch, and when Dixie was sitting between us. When Dixie had already decided that he liked the couch a lot. One, said the preacher again. When Dixie looked at him kind of hard. Your mama was funny. She could make just about anybody laugh. Two, he said. She had red hair and freckles. Just like me, I said. Just like you, the preacher nodded. Three, she liked to plant things. She had a talent for it. She could stick a tire in the ground and grow a car. When Dixie started chewing on his paw, and I tapped him on the head to make him stop. Four, said the preacher, she could run fast. If you were racing her, you couldn't ever let her get a head start because she would beat you for sure. I'm that way too, I said. Back home in Watley, I raced Liam Fullerton and beat him, and he said it wasn't fair because boys and girls shouldn't race each other to begin with. I told him he was just a sore loser. The preacher nodded. He was quiet for a minute. I'm ready for number five, I told him. Five, he said. She couldn't cook. She burned everything, including water. She had a hard time opening a can of beans. She couldn't make head nor tail of a piece of meat. Six. The preacher rubbed his nose and looked up at the ceiling. When Dixie looked up too. Number six is that your mama loved a story. She would sit and listen to stories all day long. She loved to be told a story. She especially liked funny ones. Stories that made her laugh. The preacher nodded his head like he was agreeing with himself. What's number seven, I asked. Let's see, he said. She knew all the constellations, every planet in the nighttime sky, every last one of them. She could name them and point them out, and she never got tired of looking up at them. Number eight, said the preacher, with his eyes closed was that she hated being a preacher's wife. She said she just couldn't stand having the ladies at church judge what she was wearing and what she was cooking and how she was singing. She said it made her feel like a bug under a microscope. When Dixie lay down on the couch, he put his nose in the preacher's lap and his tail in mine. 10, said the preacher. Nine, I told him. 
Nine, said the preacher. She drank. She drank beer and whiskey and wine. Sometimes she couldn't stop drinking. And that made me and your mama fight quite a bit. Number 10, he said with a long sigh. Number 10 is that your mama loved you. She loved you very much. But she left me, I told him. She left us, said the preacher softly. I could see him pulling his old turtle head back into his stupid turtle shell. She packed her bags and left us, and she didn't leave one thing behind. Okay, I said. I got up off the couch, when Dixie hopped off too. Thank you for telling me, I said. I went right back to my room and wrote down all ten things that the preacher had told me. I wrote them down just the way he said them to me so that I wouldn't forget them. And then I reached them out. I read them out loud to Win Dixie until I had them memorized. I wanted to know those ten things inside and out. That way, if my mama ever came back, I could recognize her and I would be able to grab her and hold on to her tight and not let her get away from me again. Excuse me. That was chapter four. If you go back in the chapter, you'll notice that her dad told her 10 things about her mom because that's what Opal asked. There were a couple of traits of her mom that her dad shared with her that she said she had similar, that she had similar traits as well, or similar things about herself with her mom. What I'd like you to do is go back in the story and see if you can find two traits that she shared with her mom. So maybe it was number two or number five. So go back and see if you can find the two that she shared with her mom. All right, one example or one of the 10 things that Preacher shared about Opal's mom, that she had the same thing about, was number two. So on page 26, it says, she had red hair and freckles. And Opal said, just like me. So one thing that she shared with her mom was her red hair and freckles. So we know that she kind of got her physical traits from her mom. Another one that she shared was number four, which said that she could run fast. If you were racing her, you couldn't ever let her get a head start because she would beat you for sure. And Opal said that she's that way too. And then she talked about how she beat this kid Liam back in Watley, but he was a pretty sore loser about it. So those are some traits that she shared about her mom. So she was excited to learn about them because she didn't know that there were some things that she had in common with her mom. What I also would like you to do is to think about how do you how do you think Opal and the preacher is feeling right now? So while they're learning more about Opal's mom, how do you think they feel as they're talking about her and as they're sharing these traits? So go ahead and take some time to think, how do you think Opal and the preacher feels about talking about her mom? For Opal, I would say that she probably feels a little bit excited to learn more about her mom. Maybe a little sad in that she misses her. She doesn't know where she is because her mom left. But she was excited to learn these things about her mom and get to know her. And it said at the end that she wrote all of them down so she wouldn't forget. And that way if her mom ever came back, she could recognize her. So I think Opal would be more excited, more curious to get to know her mom. But when you think about the preacher, he hadn't told Opal these things for a while. So maybe it was because he's upset that she left. Maybe it's because he's really sad and doesn't like to talk about it. You'll notice that Opal continues to call her dad a turtle and how his head will slowly pop out of his shell and then um, slowly pop back in. And I think she's using that to say that sometimes her dad 
can hide or just be very reserved, which doesn't say a lot, doesn't talk about things a lot. Um, but sometimes he'll pop that head out of the shell, which means that he'll be willing to share things. So for example, he popped his head out of his shell when he talked about the 10 things about his wife or Opal's mom. So maybe throughout this time, Preacher got really sad because he was rem remembering things about someone that left him. And so that could be really sad. Now that we've read chapter four and talked about some different things within it, we're going to move on to the vocabulary. So one word in the vocabulary that we're going to do today is constellations. So we're on the second half of the first page of the vocabulary sheet. And we have constellations and memorize. Those are our two words for today. In the book, if you want to go back to chapter four, on page 28, is where it talks about constellations. So let's read the text and see if we can use our context clues to decide what the definition would be for this word. In the middle of the page, <clears throat> where it says, what's number seven? We'll start there. What's number seven, I asked. Let's see, he said. She knew all the constellations, every planet in the nighttime sky, every last one of them. She could name them and point them out, and she never got tired of looking up, up at them. So it says that she knew all the constellations and every planet in the sky. Well, when you think about looking up at the sky, sometimes we can see planets. They're really, really tiny little dots sometimes. But there's also other things that we can see up there. So if you were ever outside in the middle of the night and you looked up and you saw the moon, maybe you saw some really bright things, made me think of what those are called. All right, and if you've ever heard the term constellations, think about the different constellations. So for example, if you've ever heard of the Big Dipper and the Little Dipper, those are examples of constellations. Give you a few more seconds to think about what you believe the definition of constellations could be. All right. Here is the definition of constellations. It is a group of stars that form a recognizable pattern. So it means that if you look up in the sky, you might be able to see a constellation because it's a pattern that you have seen before. So for example, the Big Dipper, I'll draw it for you. I'm not a great artist, but I'll try my best to get a marker real quick. So the Big Dipper is normally Stars that might look like this, but if you connect them, it forms this. So it kind of looks like a ladle that you would use to get soup out or like a big spoon. So that's why it's called the Big Dipper. So this is an example of a constellation because we don't see the lines in the sky, but if you recognize those, I think it's six stars, you'd be able to form the Big Dipper. So that's an example of a constellation. Maybe throughout the next week or so, if the sky is clear, you would be able to go outside with your family and see if you can find different constellations. My brother took astronomy last year in school, which means it's just like the study of space and the things in the sky above us. And so he taught me some different constellations that he was able to identify through that class. So it's really fun to do with your family. I highly encourage it. You could even go online and see different constellations and then see if you can find them in the sky. That would be awesome. Your second word is memorize. So in the story, it's towards the end of, chap end of chapter four, on page 30, is when the word memorize pops up. So if we start, let's say the second line, because that's the start of a new sentence, it says, I wouldn't forget them, which is Opal talking about the 10 things that she learned about her mom. I wouldn't forget them, and then I read them out loud to Winn-Dixie until I had them memorized. Now maybe throughout school you've had to memorize your multiplication facts. Um, maybe you've had to memorize different rules for spelling or writing, um, or memorize different, let's say, operations of math, so like addition, subtraction, multiplication, um, and division. So you had to memorize those so you could remember. 
What does it mean to memorize something? So see, if you need to go back in the story, use your context clues again, or a dictionary, and write the definition for the word memorize. So those are your two words. What I also would like you to do today is in the story, we learn 10, get my other finger in there, 10 things about Opal's mom. So Mrs. Pergram and some of the other third grade teachers and I have decided that we would like you for a writing assignment to come up with 10 unique things about yourself. So I came up with my own example and I said top 10 things about Miss Kilgore. So I have my kind of my title and then you see I have it numbered 1 to 10 and I have 10 different unique facts about me. All right. All you're doing today this is going to be a step-by-step -step process and I'll write all the directions down uh, above this video. But the only thing you need to do today is come up with 10 things about yourself. All right. Notice because Miss Kilgore sometimes has trouble with capitalizing her letters and using punctuation, we've known this the entire semester, sometimes you might not capitalize things or use your punctuation the first time. This is a rough draft, so think of writing. We have a writing process. There's going to be mistakes, and that's okay because we're not perfect. It might take us a couple of days to make sure everything is right. But today, all I want you to do is use your brain, think really hard. What are 10 things that are unique about myself? So, for example, number one, I am left-handed. You might not know about that about me, but the majority of people in this world are right-handed. I write with my left hand. So I think that's a unique fact about myself. Another unique fact is I love to sing and listen to music. Music is a big part of my life. Um, anytime I have a chance, I love to listen to music, go to concerts with my friends, or just sing really loud at the top of my lungs to the radio. So I think that's another unique fact about me. So think of things that you want people to know about you and things that make you unique in who you are. All right. So for example, maybe some of you will say, oh, I love playing soccer or I love playing baseball. Maybe others might say, I love drawing. Maybe there are specific things you love to draw. Or maybe others would say, I love horses or I love bowling. You guys have so many different things that are unique and awesome about you and make you you. So I want to know those 10 things about you. All right. Again, all you do today is just write the 10 things about you. Tomorrow, we'll do the edit and revise process. So today is just kind of our rough draft. We're just making our rough draft. And then tomorrow, we'll edit and revise. And Monday, we will publish. All right. So once you have the 10 things written about you, and you have your two vocabulary definitions, also remember that for a grade, I want to know the character traits of Opal. So if you could, um, send that in a direct message. I am also doing the Win Dixie one, which we will go over tomorrow. So you will have two characters and have character traits for each of those. So try to turn that in direct message me tomorrow. All right. Other than that, um, enjoy the rest of your day.